Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Here's a simple momentary button. Press it and I'm toggling the LED on and off. Pretty simple you would think. But uh, again, I'm using a button and you have a mechanical element here and you have a problem with uh, a lot of glitching before you get a nice good contact made. So you have some debouncing that uh, needs to be uh, deployed. In a past video, we used um, a Schmidt trigger to do hardware debouncing. And in this case here, we're using software debouncing. So you can see here, when we toggle, uh, two things that we have to keep um, track of is the previous state and the current state. And we compare those two to make a decision, because you can see once I take my finger off, it stays lit. And when we toggle it to the off position, it stays off. So let's take a look at uh, some of the considerations that uh, we have to take into uh, on this switch and how we're going to solve that. So let's take a look at the pulse that occurs or the transition that occurs from uh, a zero to a high or a one position when we press this switch in. So on this switch here we have this uh, pull down resistor that goes to ground and we're feeding this one side. Uh, we're going to read that signal on pin two here on the digital, we're gonna do a digital read. So we're not concerned with an analog value here. We're concerned with either zero volts or five volts. And when the other side of the switch here is tied to five volts, so when you close this switch, it uh, then pulls this value up uh, on this resistor up to five volts. Otherwise, it's going to be zero. So we're looking at the voltage, the digital voltage, with the digital read on pin two. Now let's go take a look at what that uh, transition is going to look like. So just like with hardware debouncing, um, the, same, the same problems we're trying to uh, alleviate here is that you have some intermittent connections before the transition is finally going to set, uh, settle to a stable state. So initially we'll have zero here with that pull down resistor. And when we press that button in, uh, it allows the five volts to get to the other side of the switch and pull up that resistor to five volts. But the mechanical connection, you're going to have a little bit of glitches, so you're going to have maybe a momentary, and there's a very small amount of time that's going to go by. We're not talking about, you know, seconds here. So you get a couple of glitches, and then finally you'll settle and you have this 5 volts. So we want to have a, a way of getting past or making our measurement once we've figured that enough time has gone by and we're at a nice stable uh, high here of 5 volts. And we're just going to arbitrarily pick, say, 5 microseconds. And here's the circuit here. So we have the 5 volts on one side of the switch. We've got a 10K resistor. And it pulls this to ground. This will be uh, 0 volts. And then once this contact is closed, this point here, which is going to pin two, that we're going to do a digital read on pin two, will then go to the uh, plus five volts. So let's see how we can do that um, software wise. Well, let's go over the methodology that will give us, you know, the blueprint for how we how we're going to write the code. Um, so we have two states we're interested in, right? We have uh, a previous button state, 
and we're going to have a current button state. So we want to compare what happened in the past as to what the state of the button uh, signal looks like at the present time or the current button state. So we're going to have these two variables, a previous button and a current button, and we're going to initialize those to a low. Then we're going to read the current button state. So we'll, we'll press the button in uh, or not, and we'll read it. If it's different, then we know something, is, something has changed. So if you were to press it and it's 5 volts, and you were to compare that current 5 volts to the past where it was 0, you know there was a change. So now we, we, we know there's a change, and we, and we want to make a measurement, but we want to make a measurement that's going to ignore this. So what we do is we say, okay, now what we'll do is we'll let 5 milliseconds go by, We'll put in a delay before we go and just read this all over again. And remember, this is five milliseconds. So your button is still pressing down. You know, it's just enough time that all these glitches have passed. And now we're at this steady, stable, five-volt state. So read the current button state. If the current button state differs from the previous button state, Let's wait five milliseconds. After five milliseconds, we'll reread the button state and then store that in the variable called current button state, right? Or current button. Now, if the previous state was low and the current state is high, we know that we now have a signal. We, at that transition, we want to, every time that transition occurs, we want to toggle an LED from off to on and from on to off. So we want to toggle it. We want it to go to the opposite state. Again, that's, that's almost another thing where the LED will have a previous state. And whatever that state is, we're just going to toggle it. So, and then after that, after we've toggled the LED, set the previous button state to the current state and then return back up to step two. That's going to be uh, our little algorithm or in this case our, it's going to be a function we're going to create that we can call over and over again. So we're going to use this to reliably read the transition on that toggle switch whenever it's pressed in. Now remember we're, going, we're also going to have a loop here. So once we take uh, our finger off that finger off that button, uh, it's going to reset the previous state because it's in a loop and it's going to make a measurement. So we're going to we're going to end up back to zero. So when we press that button, it's going going to be looking for that zero to one or five volt state again. So we get the bottom there. So at the, number six, set previous button state to the current state. And then we're going to return to step two. So here's the sketch that's going to toggle the LED. And we're also going to have that, um, we're going to have a debouncing function that we're going to call uh, in order to get a value that's going to let enough time to pass that's going to read the, uh, the transition from zero to one reliably uh, on that button. So as you can see, we start off by declaring some variables here. We're declaring, we have uh, integer LED equals to 10. So the LED we're going to connect to pin 10 the button's connected to pin 2. Now we're using a Boolean uh, last button, last button of type Boolean, so it's a logic, so it's low or high, and we're initializing it to low. And here we have a Boolean current button, so 
this is last button, current button is low. And Boolean LED on, uh, that's what we're going to uh, toggle to tell the LED to turn on and off. So we're going to initially set that to false. So it's another uh, Boolean value. It's either true or false. False is zero. True is a, is a one. Now in void setup, we're using pin mode to say that the LED or pin 10 is going to be an output. And here the button, which is on pin 2, is going to be an input. Now here's the function uh, that's going to take care of our debouncing and it's almost like a self-contained unit. If you notice here we have boolean last and which is new and we have um, boolean current which is basically this is the first time you see it. We didn't go ahead uh, previously and declare these variables as anything. So this is a self-contained unit here and what we have is the Boolean current is going to get the value uh, from the digital read. And it's going to compare that to the last value. And the last value was zero when it first starts. So we have it's going to see if there's a difference between the last value and the current value. And if there is, then we want to wait for five milliseconds so we have the delay before we do the digital read on pin two again. And finally, that current value uh, will be stored in the current and it will return that value. So this function here, when, call, when called, is going to return the, the value that it, pin 2 sees uh, from that button, whether it's a 0 or a 1. Actually, the transition from 0 to 1. If there's no transition, nothing happens. And then we have the continuous loop. Rem remember that just because we're not pressing that button, uh, it doesn't mean anything's going on. This is a continuing running loop now. So when you take your finger off the button, um, the last state goes back to zero. And But that's not going to toggle the LED because the LED is only, only going to toggle when it receives the information that the transition from zero to, to the five volts has occurred. So in the loop, here we have the loop. We've got the current button is going to equal, so debounce last button. So when you press that button and it makes the transition from 0, 1, this will return a value and store it into the current button. Now if the last button was low and the current button is high, that's when we're going to toggle the LED, only during the transition. And that function only returns a value during the transition. So in this case, if the LED was off, this here is not LED on. So if, if it's not off, it's on. So the new value on, on LED on will be high. And then we take the current button state. We want to reset it to the last button state. And then we do a digital write to the LED, LED on. So the LED is on pin 10. And this here is the value. In this case, the very first one is, is been turned on. We toggled it from a zero uh, to a one or plus five volts. This will turn on. 
So this loop is constantly running and the function is going to return uh, a value that's going to uh, wait that five seconds. So it's going to give us a reliable transition of zero to one. And it gets called within this loop. So nothing, it doesn't see a change until that button is pressed. And then once it sees that change, we're going to toggle the LED from its previous state to, to its opposite. So we have it, if it's on, it's off, and if it's off, it'll be turned on. So there's a lot there just to uh, make sure you can reliably uh, read this sw mechanical switch and uh, negate the, the glitching through software debouncing to make sure you get a reliable signal to uh, trigger whatever you're going to trigger. You don't want to get any false triggers. So you can see here. There's no momentary on or off. When it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. So that's software debouncing. Um, I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and or comment. And see you next video.